Hey everyone, it's Desiree. We are here with day 15 of my 2021 Christmas series, and today I'm going to feature Rubber Stamp Tapestry and their Poinsettia Flourish Peg Stamp Set. This is a wonderful set. We have nice, big, chunky peg stamps, and we are going to mix a little bit of stamping and heat embossing with this card. This is going to be a five by seven card, and I'm going to start out using my Innocent Pink by Gina K and stamping the poinsettias. I'm then going to come in with the red velvet and then the red hot. So I wanted all kinds of different colors of our poinsettias. For the green, I will use both jelly bean green and fresh asparagus. Now, you're going to see at one point in this video, it's I'm going to freeze it um, because there's something that absolutely horrific that happened. So I will warn um, some of you, if you don't like shocking things, uh, when that is about to happen, but I wanted to keep it in because it caused such an issue. Okay, back to the stamping. So you can see I'm just filling up this panel. Now this panel is a standard four and a quarter by five and a half, but we're going to die cut our image um, out of this, but I wanted to fill in the whole panel. So using those two greens, it's allowing for some depth um, and some texture onto our panel. For the last peg, it's like a, a branch. So what I wanted to do with that, I'm going to heat set this panel first to make sure my dye ink is dry. And then I'm going to use my clear ink and I'm going to stamp the branches with that. And every once in a while, you're going to see me um, coming in with the embossing powder. This is my Recollections Gold embossing powder. So you saw I checked the panel first. I always, this time I test it. Usually I don't because I don't worry about that. Um, but this time I did, you know, figured, okay, let's try something new. Yeah, and it was. So by using my heat tool, I was able to dry the dye inks. And I'm just going to fill this in and then I will heat set this until it is all melted. So it's just giving that little bit of shimmer onto this panel. And again, just looking to fill in some of the areas, mainly focusing towards the center line because that's where the image will be that I'm going to uh, be die cutting. The die cuts that I'm going to use are by Sizzix. Now, I've had these for a very long time. Matter of fact, I'm not even sure what they're called. Um, I believe I'm just going to call them some nested trees. Um, but I do know that they are by Sizzix. So I will try to find them. Um, and it's a set of four, which I think is great. I'm going to use my repositional tape to tape that down, run that through my die cutting machine. And now I'm going to stamp my image. Now that container there, it's actually a talcum powder container and I use that fluff and I fill it with the Brutus Monroe uh, refill anti-static powder. And again, I'm going to come in with my Recollections Gold. This is my goal to my go-to embossing powder. This is a big stamped image by scrapbook.com. Um, it is called Big and Bold Christmas, but the image, I mean, I did not have to stamp that again. It just embossed beautifully. I'm going to use my paper trimmer just to trim this down to a rectangle side. This is going to sit below our tray, and we're going to create a second layer to that tray. I'm going to adhere this embossed panel here onto some red glitter paper, and I'm going to make sure I use my liquid adhesive because it is glitter cardstock, and I'll use an acrylic block to set on top of that to make sure that it adheres. Again, I do apologize for my voice. I'm trying to get everything done, all my voiceovers in one day. Um, so I am losing my voice. So I do apologize. I went around with my clear ink from Simon Says onto the larger tree that I die cut. And then I'm going to cover that with the gold embossing. And I'm coming in with a dry brush just to make it 
um, grungy, straggle. You know, I didn't want a clear line when it comes to that. So it's almost as if I came in with vintage photo ink along the edges. I'm going to heat set that. And then we've just got this hint of gold sitting on the other side of that outer frame. <clears throat> I'm going to use my large shears just to cut around to give that same size border. And I'm going to adhere this onto the same color green cardstock again just to help frame that and i'll do the same thing with my large shears i'm just cut around that to create that frame i'm going to pop up this image using some double-sided foam squares so that we can have some dimension there because i'm actually going to have that piece uh, the sentiment come up underneath that tree that is popped up. I'm going to adhere this to my 5x7 card base. Now this card base is by Tonic. Um, I do love their pre-made card bases um, because they have some great sizes. I love their 6x6 and their 7x7s and they come at a great deal when they have a sale. I didn't put the tree up high enough and I did not want to cut off the bottom. So yep, you are watching this. I am tearing that back off the card base, adding some more glue, putting that right towards the top, making sure it's centered, and then that fits perfectly right up underneath that sentiment. So I'm going to lift this up just a little bit, add a little bit of glue to that so that it sits right underneath that, and then we'll put a block on top of that just to add that weight there and put some more pressure. So now it's time to embellish. I chose some of my Open Studios uh, glitter glue. I'm freezing this. So if you don't like shocking elements or something that happens quickly, please turn away now. But this was absolutely amazing when this happened to me. As I was using my uh, drops, it exploded. Now the burst has already happened if you want to start looking at the screen again. It had jammed up and I kept on putting pressure on the bottle and it literally all came out. This went everywhere. It went on my card. If you look in the upper right hand corner there, it just splattered across that. It even hit the envelope that I had sitting off to the left of my area. I tried using a, a craft pick to get off the glitter. I tried the sand eraser. Remember, I am not a fan of the sand eraser. This would not remove it. So this stuff stays put. That's a good thing. But you all know me. We keep going and there is a way to fix this. So I pulled out my aged mahogany distress put it down onto one of my palettes, added a little bit of water, and we are gonna put some red splatter going across. I know, not white, but the white does come in. By putting those splatters, and I'm even doing it to the envelope, it actually went across this envelope, but it just went into the corner. So what I did with that was I created this halo on the envelope. So when you put your stamp and when you write, it's even decorated the envelope. So there you go. There's a first for me. I got my white watercolor and I'm going to even splatter the white onto the envelope again, just in those upper corners to create that halo. And then I'm also going to do it to the front of this card. Guys, I promise you, unless I point it out to somebody, I know where it is but it's hardly noticeable. So remember, keep going. And I do apologize for that burst that happened. But I do hope I gave you some tips and tricks on how to keep going and you enjoy day 15 featuring rubber stamp tapestry. As always, products that I used will be listed down below. And if you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave those down below as well and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Please make sure you stay tuned for day 16. For those of you that have been with me from the beginning, I just want to take a moment to say thank you. And even those that just stopped by, and if you're starting here in the Christmas series, I appreciate each and every one of you stopping by and watching my videos. And I do hope 
you enjoy them and I gave you some ideas and inspiration for your holiday card making. Remember, dig into your stash, have fun and use these techniques with what you already have. Always remember though what's most important, always be creative. And until day 16, guys, I'll talk to you then.